Happy Halloween, everyone! I am Sammy, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. Today, I will be hauling and unboxing books for the month of October as Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. I thought I'd get into the Halloween spirit and dress up as my favorite witch. This video will be similar to my last haul and unboxing video in that the first portion will be dedicated to opening up all the packages and the second portion will be me discussing the manga. My haul videos are always on the longer side, but I have included lots of timestamps, so feel free to jump around. And with that, I invite you to grab a coffee or other beverage of your choice and let's unbox the manga.
I hope you enjoyed the unboxing portion of this video, and without skipping a beat, let's haul some manga. The first manga I'm hauling today is the third and final volume of the Seven Seas publication, We Swore to Me in the Next Life, and that's when things got weird by Hacho Hachia. This Jose age gap rom-com follows a princess and a knight who were madly in love but couldn't be together, so they promised to find each other in the next life. After the couple reunites in the modern world, they discover another obstacle in their relationship. They were born 23 years apart. I'm really excited for this manga. The premise sounds exactly like something I would like and I absolutely adore the covers of this series. The illustrations, the flowers, the colors, it's all so pretty. You guys know that I love a good age gap romance and I think this is my first age gap manga featuring an older woman. I've been waiting for this final volume to read this series and I can't wait to binge the whole thing. <laughs> Next up, I'm hauling a pre-order that I've been patiently waiting for and that's volume 5 of the Jose Romance, I think it's pronounced Wotaku, Love is Hard for Otaku by Fujita. I don't remember exactly what the plot of this manga is. I actually stopped reading this series after the first three volumes because there was a two year lull between volumes three and four. I think the lull had something to do with the fact that these are omnibus books. Each volume contains two manga. As you can see, they're chunky boys. <laughs> As I said before, I don't remember too much of the plot, but I remember loving the characters and finding them incredibly relatable because they're all otaku. The characters love manga, video games, and cosplay. I remember showing my husband scenes from a couple volumes because the main couple reminded me of him and I. Now that I have volume five, I'm going to start this series over from the beginning. I have a really good feeling about this. Also, I'm in love with the covers for this series. I love how it's a mixture of matte and glossy. I don't know if you can see the gloss, the shine. And I love that on the inside, it shows you the covers of the Japanese volumes because we obviously don't get to see them because these are omnibus editions. This next manga really snuck its way into this haul because I ordered it a couple days ago and that's volume 2 of Donuts Under a Crescent Moon by Shio Yusui? Usui, I think don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. <laughs> my daughter gifted me the first volume of this manga earlier this month for my birthday, and when I saw there was only one volume available of volume two through Amazon, I bought it. <laughs> this series is out of stock everywhere, so I wasn't about to pass off, pass up the opportunity to buy this. This series series follows a woman named Uno and Uno is trying to achieve what society expects of her. Be feminine, be cheerful, be polite, find a man, fall in love. These pressures are getting to Uno, pushing her into a mental space of self-loathing and depression. However, after meeting Asahi, a serious and level-headed female co-worker, Uno begins to think about what she wants from life. The reviews for this office romance are incredibly positive with everyone agreeing that it's adorable and sweet. I saw a lot of people mentioning that it's very relatable as well and I hope I'm able to read it soon. The next series I'm hauling is volume one and two of the beautiful Yen Press publication, Golden, I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it Jap Japanese Q? or Japanese, A Splendid Yokohama Romance by Kaho Miyasaka. This shoujo historical romance takes place during the Meiji period in Japan and follows Maria, a 16-year-old girl who is half Japanese with blonde hair and blue eyes. 
Maria wishes that she didn't look so different and hides her unique features for fear of discrimination, but when a young mischievous boy named Rintaro declares Maria's appearance is straight out of a fairy tale, her outlook on beauty begins to change. I haven't looked at too many reviews for this, but I believe the ratings are pretty good. To be honest, I largely purchased the series for the covers. The art style is gorgeous. I recently read another historical romance published by Yen Press called A Bride's Story, and I really, really enjoyed that manga. So I'm interested in trying something else from the same genre. Also, I think this is a Cinderella type story where a rich person falls for a servant. If you didn't know, I'm a fairy tale hoe and I love stories that take inspiration from fairy tales. This series is quite new. It debuted in February and there's only two volumes available in English. I've already pre-ordered the third volume and I can't wait to start reading. Finally, after months of waiting, it's time to haul the latest installment of the incredible shonen series, Volume 6 of Spy Family by Tatsu Endo. For those that don't know, this Viz Media publication follows Twilight, a master spy whose next mission requires him to obtain a family quickly. Under an alias, Twilight is able to marry and adopt a child within a week. However, unbeknownst to him, his new family members have secrets of their own. His new wife is a deadly assassin, and his little girl can read minds. This action-packed comedy is one of my favorite ongoing manga at the moment. This family-centered story is very wholesome and unique, plus the relationship dynamics among the characters are really special. Anya Forger is the cutest, funniest, sweetest little girl ever and actually won the title of favorite newest character in my mid-year manga freakout tag. She's such a goofball. I love her so much. <laughs> now, in the last volume, there was an introduction to a new character. She's actually on the cover of this volume and I feel that she could really put a wrench into things, so I'm a little nervous but I'm still very eager to know what happens. I'll probably read this tonight before bed. <laughs> this next series is one that was actually recommended to me by I Dream and Bubble Tea on Instagram, and it looked like something I would really like, and that's volumes one through four of the completed shoujo series, The Prince in His Dark Days by Hiko Yamanaka. If I'm remembering correctly, this Kodansha publication is about a girl escaping her life of poverty by switching places and impersonating a wealthy heir of a huge corporation. This gender bender romance is described as being a heartrending modern love story with multiple reviewers expressing that it's a lot darker than they expected. And apparently... There's some damage on my volume. Oh my gosh! And there's gouges in the back. This is the only volume that I was able to find in stock through Bright Stuff. That's so sad. <laughs> I did notice that this was rated 16 plus and I love exploring darker themes in manga. So I went on a limb and bought the whole series. <laughs> the art style looks nice. It looks nice. It looks pretty. And the synopsis is giving me Prince and the Pauper vibes. I'm very intrigued to see where this story goes. The next manga I'm hauling today are volumes two through four of the reverse harem romance, Those Not So Sweet Boys by Yoko Nogiri. Nogiri Sensei is the same mangaka that wrote That Wolf Boy Is Mine, and that series was a New York Times bestseller. So I expect this will be pretty good. Essentially, this is about a girl who broke her school's policy by having a part-time job, and the chairman of the school board instructs her to round up a bunch of delinquent boys, 
and get them attending school again. Failure to do so will result in her expulsion. This Kodansha series is completed in Japanese at seven volumes, so it's a fairly short series as far as shoujo goes. I'm not entirely sure what to expect from this series. It has good reviews up until the ending, so that's a little worrying, but I'm committed now. <laughs> I do like the premise and I think the art is cute. I might just keep collecting the series until I have all seven volumes and then read it all at once because I have so much other manga in my collection right now that I need to read and binging an entire series is my favorite way to consume manga. So really hoping that this is a good one. If you've read any of this series, uh, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of it. The next series I'm hauling is one that I kind of found in a back-end sort of way. Ages ago, I saw Rei Nice Guy post about the one-shot manga The God's Lie by Kori Ozaki on her Instagram, and it sounded really interesting. So I added it to my wish list. When I was putting this right stuff order together, the God's Lie was unfortunately out of stock, but then I saw volumes one through three of The Golden Sheep by the same mangaka, and I was, I was mesmerized by this cover. I don't know why, I just had this gut feeling, and after a quick look at the ratings on Goodreads, I bought all three volumes of this vertical publication. <laughs> I can't recall what this short series is about, I didn't really look into it too much. I just know that this manga isn't exactly what it seems. The cover art looks kind of cutesy and fun, but I believe that this deals with some pretty dark themes. I have a feeling I'm going to really like this series. It checks a lot of boxes for me. I love the art style, it's a shorter manga series, and it deals with heavier topics. So. Hopefully I can get to it soon. I absolutely love the paper that the covers were printed on. It's textured, kind of. It feels like construction paper almost. Yeah, I was when I was opening it in the unboxing portion, I just had to kind of... Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what they printed it on. <laughs> Up next, we have volumes one and two of the Sublime publication, Candy Color Paradox by Isaku Natsumi. This yaoi title follows a reporter and a photographer who have to work together during stakeouts. However, the two don't get along and are constantly arguing and bickering, but the more time they spend together, the closer they get. <laughs> Besides Dick Fight Island, I haven't purchased Yaoi in a long time, and when I saw this, it sounded cute and I wanted to try it. However, I feel a little dumb because I think it's going out of print. <laughs> it's really hard to find the rest of the books, um, especially the third volume. It just doesn't exist. <laughs> um, so that's fun. I'm going to hold off reading the series until I can find all five volumes. I'm crossing my fingers. I hope I can find the last couple volumes of this series at an affordable price. I am very excited for the series that I'm pulling next because I've only heard good things about it and that's volumes two through seven of the Satan series, My Boy by Hitomi Takeno. I talked about this vertical series briefly in my last haul video, but essentially this manga follows a relationship between a 30-year-old woman and a 12-year-old boy. Both characters are lonely and friendless and begin to sense that the other has something that they're searching for. This manga was originally recommended to me in my YouTube comments by Devil Moon, and if I'm remembering correctly, they explained that this series has the same vibes as After the Rain. Love After the Rain. <laughs> Apparently, the storyline for this is a bit weird and somewhat controversial, but I recently found out that this manga is an award-winning, top-selling series in Japan, so that's very impressive. 
The series is complete in Japan at nine volumes, and the eighth volume is releasing in English next month. I really like the cover art for these books. The illustrations are very beautiful and soft. My expectations for this series are pretty high. <laughs> Up next, I'm hauling volumes 2 and 3 of the Slice of Life manga, A Man and His Cat by Umi Sakurai. I received the first volume of this uh, for my Mother's Day video from my cat Pumpkin, and the premise sounded so adorable and so wholesome I had to buy some more of the series. This is about an older gentleman who buys a cat that has been up for adoption at the pet store for almost a year. What follows is a pure and heartwarming story about friendship, love, and the bond between the cat and his owner. I've read a couple reviews for this Satan series and people have so many nice things to say about this. Furthermore, A Man and His Cat was voted one of the top 10 manga of 2018 by Japanese bookstore employees nationwide. Being a cat person myself, I'm very keen to read this series and experience all the cute and positive feels. <sighs> oh, I let myself out now. <laughs> Another very wholesome and sweet slice of slice of life manga that I'm hauling today is volumes 1, 2, 4, and 5 of the Seven Seas publication BL Metamorphosis by Kaori Surutani. I was really hoping that the third volume would make it in time for this video, but alas, I'll have to haul it in the next one. This award-winning manga follows a high school girl and, and an elderly woman bonding over their passion for BL manga. And it follows the unlikely friendship that develops as these two individuals dive into the BL fandom together. <laughs> I'm really excited to read this series because I love the concept of the story, it's original and fresh. I'm excited to explore the budding intergenerational friendship between the main protagonists, and the fact that Grandma is into BL makes me think that this is going to have some funny moments as well. This just sounds like a very chill read, no high stakes, just people being people, and I'm all for it. The second last manga I'm hauling today is one that I bought after seeing it on Instagram, and that's volume one of the Kodansha publication, Die Were Gelder by Hiro Hiroaki, Hiroaki Samura, the creator of Blade of the Immortal. I know what that is, but I've never read that. <laughs> Dad Weeb from Meet the Weeb Family praises and recommends this series in multiple posts, and I was in the mood to try something new. So I bought the first volume. I'm just going to read the synopsis because there's a lot to this manga. <laughs> We're Gelder. In dramatic law, the money paid by a murderer or his family to the victims family the atonement. A mysterious deal goes down on a remote island known as a red light pleasure district. An insane fight between a blonde sniper and an assassin in a Chinese dress brings up questions about who the players are in this deal. A group of misleading students that get caught in the crossfire while trying to get in on the deal, or at least find out what's being dealt. I have no idea what to expect from this Seinen series, except maybe violence and gore, because it is rated 18 plus. I'm excited to creep out of my comfort zone with this manga. Also, it sounds like something that my husband might like. He loves a good revenge story. And now, the creme de la creme of manga I'm excited for in this haul, we have the first 12 volumes of the supernatural romance Queen's Quality by Kiyosuke Motomi. Ever since reading the prequel series QQ Sweeper, I have been beyond thrilled to read this. It's published by Viz Media, and this shoujo series is about a girl named Fumi, and Fumi lives with Kutaro and his family of sweepers, which are people who specialize in cleaning the minds of those overcome by negative energy and harmful spirits. 
In the prequel, Fumi discovers that she has mysterious and dangerous abilities. With the help of Kitaro, Fumi needs to learn how to control her new powers as she begins to truly awaken as a queen. QQ Sweeper has a little bit of everything, and I'm assuming Queen's quality will be similar, but just ramped up. The bug infestations that live in people's minds are super creepy and unsettling. There was a surprising amount of action, and I see that Fumi gets a giant ass sword at some point, so that's really cool. <laughs> The series also touches on a lot of mental health issues like depression and hoarding. I'm super duper excited to revisit the romance that begins blossoming in QQ Sweeper. It was so good. <laughs> the writing, the storyline, and the character development were all top notch. I expect great, great things from this. And that, friends, is the end of my October manga unboxing and haul video. I'm sure some of you have read some of these manga before. I'd love to know which ones you've read and what you think of them. I hope you all have a magnificent day and a happy Halloween, and I'll see you in my next video.